Hi, exit the full screen mode on your YouTube player and watch it closely. You will notice that while the YouTube player is playing my video, it's also streaming the rest of the video in the background. YouTube might be spawning multiple threads to do this. One, the first thread to stream the video and the second thread that plays the video for you. As a result of this multi-threading, you as an end user need not wait for the entire video to be streamed before you can watch it. That's the power of multi-threading. The goal for this presentation is to introduce you to the concepts of multi-threading in general and also in Java. By the end of it, you will know what a thread is. There are two different types or ways of creating threads in Java and the different stages in the life cycle of a thread. A thread is a single sequential flow of execution. When you created your first Java class with a main method, you have already used a thread. Yes, JVM, the Java Virtual Machine, creates a thread or a stack for the main method. That is, any other method calls you make from within the main method will go on to this stack. To create additional threads or to create multi-threaded application using Java, you can create the threads in two different ways. The first way is to extend the thread class and override the run method within the thread class. So we'll create a class that extends the thread class and then we'll override the run method which will have all our application code. In case of our YouTube example, we first create a play thread that can play the video and within the run method, we'll have all the application code that can play our video. We can also create a thread. The second way of creating a thread in Java is to implement the runnable interface and then overriding the run method. In, the, in case of our YouTube example again, we'll create a stream thread that implements the runnable interface and we override the run method which will have the logic to stream the video from the YouTube database. Once we create the thread classes, to use them or to start them, to invoke the thread methods, we'll create the instances of the thread classes. So in our case, we create an instance of the play thread which extends the thread class and we'll then invoke the start method on the instance of the thread class. But when you implement runnable, you have one additional step to call the start method. You can't call the start method or you can't uh, execute a thread by directly invoking the start method on the class that implements runnable. But you will create an instance of the stream thread and then you will pass it to an instance of a thread class. And then you invoke the start method on the instance of the thread class. So that's the difference between extending and implementing extending a thread class or implementing a thread to come up with a multi-threaded application or to create your own threads in a Java application. Although there are two ways of implementing threads, it's always a good object-oriented design practice to create threads by implementing the runnable interface and not extending a thread for two good reasons. One, your class can extend any other super class if you implement runnable you will be able to your stream thread class will be able to any other extend any other class it requires for your application to do what it has to do in addition it's always a good object oriented design practice to use inheritance for specialization so you inherit and override methods only when your parent class is not doing what you require in our case we are not really changing or extending or doing something which is not being done by the thread class but we are simply overriding the run method to do what our application is supposed to do in a multi-threaded multi way. So we shouldn't extend the thread class but to create threads we it's a good design practice to implement the runnable interface and then provide an implementation for the run method within which all our application code will reside. Once you invoke the, when you create the instance of a thread class, a thread goes into a new state or it's in a new state within the thread life cycle. And when you invoke the start method on an instance of a thread class, 
it moves to the runnable state. The JVM will at this point will create a stack for your thread. So just like the main method, our new threads will have its own stack and its own uh, execution flow and it will move to the runnable state. And from here it's up to the JVM's thread scheduler to move it to the running state or to execute the application code within the run method. And there is no guarantee of the order in which the JVM scheduler can run or pick your threads. For example, in our YouTube, if you go back to our YouTube example, the JVM can play, uh, run the play thread for a little bit and then you will watch the video and then it can run the stream thread where uh, your video, the rest of the video is streamed. So the order is really up to the thread scheduler that comes with the JVM. And when the thread finishes its execution, when the thread finishes, when the run method finishes, the thread goes to the dead state. At this point, you cannot call the start method again on the thread and if you try doing that, you will get an invalid state exception. And if you try calling the run method directly, instead of calling the start method, it will not, the JVM will not create a new stack for your thread or it's not really a thread. It's just like calling any other method from your main method for or, or any other method because they all share the same stack. Only when you call the start method on your thread instance, the JVM allocates a new stack for your thread and it has its own path of execution. To summarize, now you know what a thread is. It is a single sequential flow of execution and multi-threading allows our applications to make the best use of the underlying operating system and the processors to provide a nice end user experience. And there are two different ways in which we can create multi-threaded applications in Java. We can create multiple threads either by extending the thread class and by overriding the run method which will have our application logic or we can implement the runnable interface and override or provide implementation for the run method which will have the application code and the preferable way of uh, implementing threads in Java is by implementing the runnable interface because we only inherit when we want to specialize when we want to do something which the parent class is not doing and also when you implement runnable interface your class can still extend another class as required by our application and also you know that once you have, you have created your thread classes you instantiate them and call the start method on them, on them when you implement the runnable interface you have an additional step before you call the start method that is you pass your uh, thread instance the instance of your thread class or the runnable instance to a thread instance and then you invoke the start method on the thread instance. When you invoke the start method, the thread is in a runnable state. When you create an instance, the thread is in a new state or stage and when you invoke the start method, the JVM moves it to the runnable state. At this point, it's up to the JVM thread scheduler to pick, pick up the thread and run it or to move it to the running state. And once the run method completes, once it executes all the application code within the run method, the thread moves to the dead state. And if you try to invoke the start method again on a dead thread, you will get an invalid state exception. In the next session, I'll be presenting more stages in the life cycle of a thread and also more methods on the instance of a thread. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.